In this video, we're looking at finding the nth roots of a complex number, which is in polar form. So the question we're going to look at here is using de Moivre's theorem to solve the equation z to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Now before we get into actually solving this equation, I've actually put up a diagram of the answers. And because the question is to the power of 3, so the complex number is z to the power of 3, it means that there's going to be three solutions or three roots. And you can see here that we have the three roots. I've called them z1, z2 and z3 on the diagram. So that's the first thing I want you to see. When you're finding z to the power of 3, there's going to be three answers or three roots. Now, if this was z to the power of 4, you would have four roots or z to the power of 2, two roots. You'll also notice that the angle between each of these complex numbers is the same size. So this circle is broken into three segments. So that's just to give you a little bit of background as to what you're trying to achieve here. You're trying to find those three complex numbers. So as I look at my complex number, uh, z3 is equal to 8, they've only given us a real part to our complex number, but I'm going to just put in my 0i just to, to make it easier to work with. So my complex number here is 8 plus 0i. Now that's in rectangular form. Let's put that complex number into polar form. So to turn that into polar form, we need uh, to put it into or times cos theta plus i sine theta. So that's the form we want our complex number in. And in order to find our or, our or is found by getting the square root of a squared plus b squared. And our a is the real part and the b is the imaginary part. So that's my a and my b. The theta then is the angle between the x-axis and the actual complex number and that's found by getting the inverse of b over a. So they're the two parts we need. We need our radius, our modulus, and our angle, our argument. So if I do a quick sketch of this complex number 8 plus 0i, so this is my real, this is my imaginary, if I was to plot that complex number it would go roughly around here. That's the complex number. So I go out 8 on the real and I go up 0 on the imaginary. So that's the complex number. And you can see from that that the modulus of that complex number is in fact 8. We know by looking at the picture it's 8. But let's just use mathematics to get to that. So if we find our modulus, or is equal to the square root of a, which is 8 squared, and b, which is 0 squared. And that's giving me then or is equal to the square root of 64, so or is equal to 8. And lo and behold, that's what we've basically marked on our picture. You can also see on the picture, what's the angle between that coordinate, that point, and the x-axis? Well, there is no angle. It's 0. It's right in here. The angle there is, in fact, 0. And if you were to go to your calculator and actually do this using our tan inverse, you will notice that you'll get tan inverse of b over a, which is 0 over 8. And if you put that in on your calculator, it will also come up as zero. So you, as I said, you can either use your knowledge of sketching or you can use your uh, two formulae. Now that's zero degrees, which is the same as zero pi if we're working in radians or degrees. So we have zero degrees or uh, zero pi. So filling in my complex number, that's giving me z to the power of three is equal to or, which is 8, times cos theta, theta being 0 pi, plus i sine 0 pi, and close my bracket. So there's my complex number. Next thing I want to do is to eliminate this power of 3. So if you think about a number, let's just pick the number like 8 itself. If I was to get the cubed root of 8 on your calculator, you will see that your answer is 2. Now that's the same as going 8 to the power of 1 over 3. So that's the same thing. That's what the cubed root is doing. It's putting it to the power of 1 over. And that's what I'm going to do here to, uh, to get rid of that z to the power of 3. I'm going to basically multiply across by the power of 1 third. So that means then that z is equal to uh, 8 times cos 0 pi plus i sine 0 pi. And it's all to the power of 1 over 3. And that's the same as getting the cubed root, basically. So that's our complex number in polar form. So I'm just going to write that in here. So this is in polar form. 
Now what I want to do is I want to write this complex number in general polar form. So basically what we can do is, if you think about it, if, we, if I've just taken out that circle now, but that circle rotates in 360 degrees or 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees. So every time I go around 2 pi or 360, I'm bringing myself back to that original complex number. So that means that I can rewrite z as z is equal to 8 um, times cos 0 pi, so that's what I have in my polar form, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add on 2 pi, and I'm going to add on 2 pi n, and n stands for a number of circles, or number of rotations, so I could go around once, twice, thrice, as many times as I want, so that's what the n stands for. So I'm adding on that 2 n pi onto my angle, and because I'm doing it to the cos, I need to do it to the sine, so that's plus i sine, 0 pi plus 2n pi. So again, that is just standing for the amount of rotations that I'm doing. And I'm going to close my bracket. And again, that's to the power of 1 third. And that's basically known as my general polar form. Or the general form. So we would have looked at this in uh, trigonometry as well. So now I'm going to use my knowledge of uh, de Moivre's theorem. To deal with the power. So how do I deal with the power? I put the or to the power of the one third. So that's my first step. So I'm writing now z equals 8 to the power of one third. So this is coming from my uh, De Marvis theorem. And that then is times cos of my power, which is 1 over 3. And then I'm then multiplying that by my 0 pi plus 2 n pi plus uh, i sine 1 over 3 times 0 pi plus 2 n pi. So that's using my De Moivre's theorem. And I'm now going to evaluate that. So what does that give me? 8 to the power of 1 third is 2. Cos 1 third. Well, let's just focus in on what's inside the bracket here first. 0 pi plus 2 n pi. Well, that's just going to leave me with 2 n pi. So let's write that in first. So cos 1 third times 2 n pi plus i sine 1 third times 2 n pi. So it's the same thing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually multiply in that 1 third. So I go 2 times cos, multiply in the third. You don't have to do this step, but I'm just going to multiply it in as a single fraction. So top by top, bottom by bottom will give me 2 n pi over 3 plus i sine uh, 2 n pi over 3. So there's my complex number in polar form. That's I've now rewritten z as equal to that. Now what I have to do is basically find the three roots, because again, if we focus back on the question, they wanted it to be z to the power of three. Now there's three roots. The first root, we have to be careful with here. In order to get the first root, we're gonna sub zero in for n, because just think about it, we're not actually going to go within a full rotation of my circle. So that's why I'm staying at zero. So the first thing here I'm going to do is let n is equal to zero. So I'm gonna solve when n is equal to zero. So that's gonna give me z is equal to 2 times cos uh, 2 times 0 pi over 3. So I'll come back and I'll sub in that 0 now in one second. Plus i sine 2 times 0 pi over 3. So I'm basically, as I said, subbing in 0 for n. And when I evaluate that, I get uh, 2 times cos of 0 plus i sine of 0. And when I go to my calculator and I type in cos of 0 pi, I get uh, 1. And when I type in sine of 0, I get 0. So that becomes 0i. And now I'm going to multiply in that 2, which is giving me 2 plus 0i. So there's my first uh, <clears throat> solution, 2 plus 0i, or just 2. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to do n is equal to 1. Okay, so it's the same uh, system again. I'm going to go z is equal to 2 times cos of uh, 2 times 1 
times theta. Again, I'll come back in a second and I'll fill in that one in red. Plus I sine uh, two times one theta over three. And I'm closing my brackets and putting in my one. Now, when I multiply in my fractions, I'm getting z is equal to two times cos of two by one by pi is two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three. When I go to my calculator and I evaluate cos uh, two pi over three, I get negative a half. And when I evaluate sine two pi over three, I get positive root three over two. And don't forget to put back in our i. Next step is multiply in your two. So that's giving me a complex number of a root of z is equal to minus one a plus root three i. So there's my second root. When I let n is equal to one, don't forget we have three roots here. So my final one is going to be by letting n is equal to two. We have z is equal to two times cos of uh, two times two pi plus i sine two times two times pi all over three and i'll just put in my th two here and when i evaluate those i'm going to get z is equal to two times cos of four pi over three plus i sine four pi over three so that two by two gives me the four there when i go to my calculator and i work out cos four pi over three i'm getting a negative one half and when I evaluate sine four pi over three, that should be, I'm getting minus root three over two i. Next step is I'm gonna multiply in my two, and when I multiply two by negative a half, I get negative one. And two multiplied by negative root three over two gives me negative root three i. And that's my third root for z. So let's just recap now on where we are with our three roots. I've just brought back in our diagram here showing our three roots that we had from the start. And my first root, two plus zero i, I'm just marking it here in green, that's this complex number. There it is here. My second one is minus one plus root three i, which is bringing me back to here, z2, minus one up positive root three. And my third root is z is equal to minus one minus root three, which is this one here. That's my third root. And that's what the question wanted us to find. Solve the equation z to the power of three is equal to eight. And those are my three roots.